We can't avoid pain. We can't avoid suffering. We can't avoid struggling. But we could learn how to walk through it in a way that when we leave it, it is a little bit more meaningful, that we grew from it, that we understand why. Welcome to Hope to Recharge podcast. Thank you for joining me here again today. Every week we meet here to break the stigma around mental health and to bring you insight and inspiration and lots of practical tips from personal stories or professionals around the world that share how they turn their journey of mental health into healing or to thriving. Together we will break the stigma one story at a time. And mental health together is always better. Thank you for joining me here today. I'm your host, Matana. Let's get started. This episode of the Hope to Recharge podcast is sponsored by Maxifies.com. Maxifies offers doctor-formulated, lab-certified, high-quality CBD oils and tinctures in three different formulas that provide relief from anxiety and stress, muscle relaxation, and a sleep aid to help get a better night's sleep in 1,500 milligram size bottles, 500 milligrams, and travel size bottle of 266 milligrams. Check out Maxifies.com, that's M-A-X-I-F-Y-Z.com, and use coupon code HOPE to get 10% off your order plus free shipping. That's Maxifies.com. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. It has been over a month, almost five weeks since I published an episode. And I need to apologize because I didn't even tell you that I'm taking a break. But I took a week break and then I realized that I really need a longer break because we are working on so many different things. I said, you know what? Hope to Recharge has almost 200 episodes of content. People were reaching out to me to ask me about different topics. So I said, you know, what? we have 200 episodes. It's okay if I take a break. I've been all over the place, traveling a lot. And I took the time to work on what is coming up next, both on Hope to Recharge and our new podcast that will be starting in the next month or two. And it's really exciting. Passover is around the corner. So much is happening. So I just want to give you an update on the past month. I've been working on this new podcast that I'm really excited about, and it's going to be all about living with our true, authentic self, with religion, with our core values, with our relationships. How do we live with intimacy with ourselves and know what we are doing and connect to it on a level of meaningfulness, not just being programmed to do, but everything that we decide that we want to do and cultivate in our life, how do we do it in a more meaningful way? And I'm going to deep dive into things that we do with religion, with practices, especially my religion and Judaism, I'm going to analyze with really people that know the books, you know, that know how to deep dive and understand different topics in our lives, different practices, different traditions. And my goal is to teach myself, I want to understand more. I want to understand. I'm 45 years old and I want to understand more of what I've been doing for 45 years. And I want to live it more meaningfully, to practice it with more understanding, with more clarity, with more enthusiasm, with more joy, authenticity, and to understand what is real and what is an add-on what is source, what is human source, what is commentary, what is advisory, what is something that happened within generations. I want to live with more, with more understanding of what I do. And I'm inviting everybody to join me along with this, I'll call it deep diving and understanding tradition, Jewish tradition. And we're going to also do other traditions, but we're going to start with my tradition because that's what I want to learn about now. So where have I been for the last month? I've been to California, a few times to Florida, Israel. I'm going to be traveling a little bit more the next few weeks. And it was a lot of balancing, a lot of balancing in the last few weeks. And at moments, I felt very high. At moments, I felt very low. At moments, I felt very anxious. And at moments, I felt maybe even I want to just sleep for two days. At moments, I felt I can conquer the world. And then maybe an hour later, I felt I remember I remind myself, no, you can't. It was literally like a heartbeat. You know, when you're on a heart machine, you can see the heartbeat, the up and down, the up and down and up and down. And I can constantly remind myself that up and down means that I'm alive and it's normal and it's okay. And it's okay to have mixed emotions constantly, especially when we don't give ourselves time to just be. My EFT practitioner, Greg, which I work with every single week, reminds me every single week, we need 
time to be. If we don't just be, we're human beings, not human doings, even though I think most of us forgot that we are human beings. And when we are human doings, our human being gets neglected and then things come up like mental illness, trauma, relationship, hiccups, with so many setbacks because we don't remember that we need to be. And one of the things that I cultivated through my healing was being, learning how to be. My old self was afraid to be with myself because there were so many demons in my mind and in my emotions that I didn't feel comfortable hanging out with them. Part of healing, one of my biggest gifts that I gifted myself and my mentors gifted me was the knowledge that being with discomfort is living. The goal is not to run away from pain. The goal is to maybe avoid pain or to make sure pain passes through with meaning. But we can't avoid pain. We can't avoid suffering. We can't avoid struggling, but we could learn how to walk through it in a way that when we leave it, it is a little bit more meaningful, that we grew from it, that we understand why. Ari and I went to California for two days to one of my closest friend's son's wedding. Then we came back. I went to Israel to celebrate my anniversary without Ari because Ari's passport got lost in the mail and God clearly didn't want him in Israel with me. I don't know why, but God didn't want him in Israel with me when I was planning to go to celebrate our 20th anniversary. But God gifted me another thing. Do you sometimes feel stuck? Do you wish you can be somewhere else? Do you have a vision of where you want to get to, but you just don't know what the first step to take in order to get to that life that you're dreaming of? How did I shift from deep depression, from extreme anxiety to a thriving life, to a productive life, to a life full of joy? I put many things into practice and it's every single day. Many of you know that it's gratitude, a healthy mindset, boundaries, self-love, and one of the most important things that many people don't speak about self-forgiveness and forgiveness to others essential for healing if you want to work one-on-one with me on these topics in order to move forward towards that dream life that you have a vision of click the link below in the show notes it's a custom made program for you one-on-one with me we will develop a concrete program that you can implement in your life so you can create a better well-being click the link below looking forward to working with you My son was turning 19 and he was in Israel for the year, a gap year in Israel. So I said, you know what? Although I don't get to spend my 20th anniversary in Israel with Ari, even though I really wanted to, we got married in Israel and I wanted to really go through the years with him in Israel and just remember all the good and do a whole gratitude week in Israel. But instead, I celebrated it with my youngest son that I took along with me, Mishael, to celebrate. We had the week in Israel and it was all about spending time with my sons. Usually when I go to Israel, it's about running around, seeing family, friends, very little sleep. But this time I put boundaries and I said, I'm not going to see anyone. And I disappointed a lot of people. And I said, I'm going to spend time with my son in Israel my two sons in Israel, and just enjoy the moment. And it was new to me to be able to go to Israel and not run around, see 15 people a day and just be. And I was so proud of myself that I got to this place of home in myself that said, it's okay to be in Israel and not see everyone. It's okay if you let people down. It's okay if you don't show up the way you usually show up. And it's okay if people will not understand. And that is part of healing, understanding that you cannot be there for everyone. But if you neglect yourself, you will eventually not be able to be there for anyone. And that was something I refused a long time ago to be. So when I came back from Israel, I had a beautiful weekend here with my family. And then I went off to Florida that Saturday night to meeting one of my mentors, Tal Ben Shachar. I've been taking his course, the Happiness Study Academy, for a little bit over a year. And hopefully I'm going to be joining his master's program to get my master's in happiness studies. I think it's the first one out there, the first master's program in happiness study. And I'm so excited 
excited, beyond excited. But first I have to graduate the Happiness Study Academy and then I can go to the next one. I got to meet Tal Ben Shachar. Originally, I wanted to go to the three-day retreat in Florida that was going into the World Happiness Summit in Miami. Unfortunately, or fortunately, or by design of God, it fell out on Purim. Purim is a holiday that we celebrate with family and friends. It's a very festive. It's like Halloween, but a little bit more in detail. The kids get dressed up. We give charity. We're supposed to eat food, festive meals with friends. We're supposed to be very happy. We're supposed to go to synagogue and read the Megillah. And there's different things that we do on Purim. It's a very family-oriented holiday. And if I would have left on that day, first of all, it would be hard for me to keep all the things that I wanted to keep. It would be very hard for me to juggle to be in a retreat and do that at the same time. So I decided that I'm going to miss out on this Happiness Study Academy retreat, which would be meeting Tal for a few days and really be very enmeshed in his teachings and the community. But I said, I'm not going to give up Purim with my children and I'm going to stay for the weekend. I went straight into the weekend and I decided that I'm going to leave to Florida right after Shabbat. I landed in Florida at close to 1.30 in the morning. The last day of the Happiness Summit was on Sunday till 12.30 p.m. I got to Florida in the middle of the night, early morning. I got home at 3 in the morning, got up to go to the summit, and I was there, I think, by 8.30 or 9 or something like that. I was able to spend the last few hours with Tal and his team. And you know what? The beautiful thing that happened, although I didn't hear three days of amazing knowledge and different speakers, but I got to see people after three days of intense workshops and I saw them when they were winding down and I came at the end. It was a different bonding experience and everybody was so happy to be after, you know, when people present, when people are on stage, when people are running a booth, there's an intensity beforehand during. When they're winding down, there's a little bit of a celebration of a joy that it's over. I got to be there. I got to be at the end. I think that was the most powerful moment. We laughed a lot. We did a photo shoot. We got to know each other very well. More if I would have come for the first day, I wouldn't have gotten to know Tal as well and his staff as well if I wasn't there at the end and although it was five hours and people would think what you came just for a few hours and I said yeah I came for a few hours it was meaningful I I made a choice and I did the best I can with what I have and that's one of the things that I speak about a lot is do the best you can with what you have because sometimes you're not going to have the ability to do it all but why give up on all if you could do some of it and it worked out so masterfully the only downside I would say was that I was exhausted I was exhausted beyond words because I was on very little sleep because I was traveling two weeks before as well and I was just on the go so my body was feeling it and I wasn't having my time to do my long meditations in the morning and my affirmations that I like doing so my body was winding down and it was going on empty so that was not the upside of it but the upside of meeting everyone and getting to bond with them I got that and I think I got it in the most impactful way right after that summit I invited a bunch of women from Cheskenu to come to a pampering small getaway retreat in my home in Florida. And it was all about cultivating our souls, our bodies, nourishing and refueling and recharging. These women are nonstop giving to the mental health community, nonstop. When I say nonstop, it's nonstop. It's Zoom meetings, it's phone calls, it's in-person meetings, it's planning so much of just supporting the mental health community. And it was beyond inspiring to be with these incredible women, incredible humans. I learned so much from them. There was laughter, deep conversation, analyzing, holding space for pain, holding space for loss. While I was there, I was also working with a bunch of clients and it was intense. It was inspiring. At the same time, I was also checking in with my family in New York. My kids wanted me. I wanted to hear what's going on with my kids. My son came home from Israel. That was also an exciting thing. I landed a few hours after him. So there was a lot going on in Florida and I was zigzagging with the heartbeat through emotions but because I wasn't sleeping I found myself having panic attacks at night. I don't remember the last time I had a panic attack in the middle of the night and it comes from a lack of sleep and a lack of nourishing my mind but I had the tools to get through it. Thank God, thank God, thank God I had the tools and I knew how to breathe through it and I knew to speak to myself and I knew how to set more clear boundaries on what I need the next day. A little bit more sleep, a little bit more downtime. I needed to 
cancel a few things that I wanted to do. There were a few losses that week in our community and it was very painful to process those losses with friends and family. When I got home, I realized that my body is saying, Matana, you need to pause. I was supposed to be in Israel this week for my nephew's wedding. My sister's marrying off a son and I really want to be there for a few days. I like going for family events because I live in America. I miss out on a lot of family get-togethers and one of the things that I tried to do is be there for celebrations but I said you know what I was gonna go with my two daughters and I said you know what we can I can't do it if I with traveling with COVID is just so overwhelming the lines the tests the bureaucracy is just too overwhelming and I said it's gonna take a toll because I'm gonna come back and then I'm flying to our next destination for Passover and I said I want to enjoy Passover something that I look forward to I love Passover I love Passover it's one of my favorite holidays I love being with my family we have long meals we have a lot of laughter a lot of singing a lot of prep a lot of screaming a lot of drama a lot of hard work a lot of hard work but also a lot of filling up our souls with joy with connections, with celebrations, because my son is home for Passover and then he's going back to Israel to finish his gap year. I wanted to be mindful that I won't fall apart at Passover. I decided I will have to once again check into my core values. And my core values is my mental health and my physical health, my family. And I said, if I do another quick trip to Israel, my body will suffer the consequences and it's not fair to my family. Why am I telling you all this? Is there something that's preventing you from achieving your goals or interfering with your happiness? Maybe it's anxiety or stress. BetterHelp.com will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. And you can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line and it's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online with a broad range of expertise available depending on what you need and the services available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send messages to your counselor. BetterHelp.com is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. They make it easy and free to change your counselors if you need to. And it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp.com wants you to start living a happier life today. So visit BetterHelp.com slash hope to recharge. That's BetterHelp.com dot com slash hope to recharge and join over a million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. You'll also get 10% off your first month. Once again, that's betterhelp.com slash hope to recharge. Because the last month was all about making choices and checking in with myself and saying, what do I need now? What are my core values now? Checking in constantly. And our core values can change sometimes on a daily basis. My mentor, John Israel, taught me, check in on your core values. And sometimes something that is your top core value will go down to number three. And sometimes it will even go out of your list. But check in with yourself and say, right now, what core value do I want to, do I need to, do I want to stick to? What do I need? What does my body need? What does my soul need? What does my mind want? When we constantly check in with ourselves and say, what do we need now? How to not neglect the loved ones that are so there for us constantly. How to not neglect our dreams, our aspirations, our next goal. How do we show up for ourselves while we're showing up for others? An empty vessel cannot give to anyone. Remember to fill up your soul. Remember to fill up your energy. Remember to stay tuned to what you need. And it's okay to have a down day. It's okay to have an off day. I had a client reach out to me and say, I'm just not feeling myself. I don't know why I'm feeling this way. I had so many plans for today. And I said, maybe it's okay to not show up today with all your plans and everything. And maybe it's okay to take the day off and say it's okay to have an off day. Maybe it's okay to have an off day and just stay in bed, take a nap, go for a walk, listen to music, do what you love, whatever you love. Is it a walk? Is it a run? Is it projects? Is it arts and crafts? Is it singing? Is it giving? Maybe it's giving to an organization that you love giving to, but you don't have time. Maybe it's writing. Maybe it's cleaning your house. Maybe it's decluttering. Maybe it's driving. What is it that you love to do? And remember to nurture yourself with that. Remember to nurture yourself. So the last month has been full of surprises, non-surprises, scheduling, rescheduling. I'm so grateful to Ari that he that he's so patient with me, with my inconsistencies of my desires. And he rolls with the punches when it comes to changing my plans, supporting me through it 
because I have anxiety when it comes to changing my plans and sticking to my plans. I often change my plans because of my anxiety and he supports me through it. And we cannot forget the people that support us through our healing and through our staying healthy. Yes, I feel like I did a long journey to my healing and I'm living a very productive, full life. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for all my supporters. But at the same time, staying in this place of wellness takes a lot of work and it's constant. And there's still people that support me constantly. And Ari and my children and my staff are constantly supporting me through my inconsistencies. And they know that it's not something that I want to be inconsistent, but it comes with my anxiety. And sometimes I have more strength to deal with it on my own. And sometimes I really need to lean on my friends and family and team in order to hold me up through this anxious time. So why am I telling you all this? Because I'm sharing that the imperfect, perfect self of us is exactly what being human is and is exactly what life is all about. And when we are perfectly imperfect and when we accept it and when we look it in the eye and we sit with it and we navigate through it, that is living alive. Living alive is through the different emotions, the high of the happiness, the high of the joy, the high of the excitement, the low of the pain, the low of grief, the low of sadness, of pain, of hurt. That's living alive. That's feeling it. Numb is not living alive. Numb is surviving. Living alive is thriving even through pain and struggle. It can be all together, everything. So Passover is coming. I'm going to try to give an inspirational thought of gratitude. I think we have to cultivate more gratitude in the world. As much as I speak about it, we have to speak about it more. What I see over and over with my clients over and over, that the focus is more on the lack versus what we do have. And I was there and I, and I shouldn't say only my clients, myself. As much as I practice gratitude, I still can work more on it. I still have so much work to do when it comes to focusing on what I do have versus what I don't have, what I want. But when we have that muscle of gratitude, it is the energy that gets us through pain, struggles, grief, loss, sadness, frustration, anger, all the emotions. It really helps us get through it. So I want to talk about it a little bit more and I'm going to try to give maybe five to 10 minutes in the next few weeks till after Passover. And after Passover, we have a very exciting month that we're going to speak about relationships. Right after Passover, we're going to have different therapists and healers and consultants and coaches that talk about relationships, cultivating healthy relationships within ourselves and within our marriages or our, with our children or with our bosses, relationships in general. And I believe that when we have a good relationship with ourselves, it is the foundation of relationships, healthy relationships with others. So that's going to be in May and June. Very exciting, very exciting episodes coming up. And I also have an episode speaking about when do we have to end relationships and what does it mean to end a relationship and does ending a relationship mean that whatever we had in that relationship was negative or can we be grateful for what we had in a relationship and still end it so certain people live in very unhealthy relationships but there are still things to hold on to good memories but how do we end it in a healthy way looking to reduce your anxiety and stress relax your muscles or get a better night's sleep check out maxifies.com 100 legal hemp where you can find doctor formulated lab certified high quality cbd oils tinctures and other items cultivated grown harvested and packaged in the united states and available in different sizes and strength formulas check out maxifies.com that's m-a-x-i ifyz.com and use coupon code HOPE to get 10% off your order plus free shipping. That's maxifies.com. One of my biggest things when I was healing was setting clear boundaries with people that I didn't have clear boundaries. And some of them I never spoke to again. And that's okay. And that's okay. And I just set clear boundaries between us because it wasn't healthy for me. But it doesn't mean that the whole relationship was negative. It was what was good for me. And we could be two very good humans that just don't go together well and how do we end relationships or how do we walk away from relationships or how do we put boundaries in relationships that are not helping us live our true authentic self with a healthy mindset with joy with authenticity and really cultivating a healthy living for ourselves 
Okay, that was a big mouthful the last 25 minutes of me talking and updating you on the last month. So what I want you to take away from this episode is that living alive means feeling it all and checking in with yourself constantly, checking in with yourself constantly. Part of healing and part of getting good mentors and part of learning about mental health, if it's with therapists, if it's with programs, if it's books, it's really about understanding ourselves and understanding when we need to make changes and how to make the changes and have the tools. Because sometimes we feel like we're stuck and we don't know what to do. We just feel icky, gross, and we're stuck and we want to get out of it and we don't know how. And that is part of the tools that we need to acquire through healing, how to move through, how to move forward, what to do, because life is going to be like a heartbeat up and down and all around. And sometimes the ups are going to be more up and sometimes the downs will be more down. How to move through it. If you want to work with me one-on-one, this is what I teach my clients. And this is what we custom make each client, a package, a toolkit, what fits their need in understanding where they get stuck in life and where they want to move forward and what tools they need in order to implement in their life. No two lives are the same. The toolkit can be full of the same tools, but I believe that every toolkit is different. Every human toolkit is different and everybody needs a different strength in different tools. So if you want to work one-on-one with me and create this toolkit to understand your toolkit, to understand what you need in your toolkit, reach out to me. There's a link in the show notes. One-on-one with Matana. We can do a discovery call, a 30-minute free discovery call to get to know each other and see if we can even work together. Some people are not ready yet and that's okay. We have to be ready in order to implement changes because the changes can be hard, the work can be difficult and it could take a toll. But whoever does it really lives a more full, fulfilled, meaningful life. By the way, I'm going to drop also a link to an episode that I did with the Gratitude Podcast, a very powerful and exciting episode that I was a guest on on this podcast. And it's full of my enthusiasm about gratitude. So if you want to listen to it, I'll drop the link in the show notes and you can grab it there. Share with us what you're up to. By the way, if you listen to us on Spotify, if you listen to us on Spotify, can you rate us on Spotify? Go to Hope to Recharge on Spotify and just give us a rating. It'll take you less than 10 seconds. If you like our, our podcast, give us a five-star rating. If you don't like it, give us whatever you think we deserve. And if you are on iTunes, please go give us a review. Every review, every share, every rating gives us higher rankings on iTunes and more and more people can listen to us. I've been getting feedback from people from all over the world, from China, from Bangladesh, from Australia, from Belgium, from Egypt, from Israel, from all over America, Canada. Unbelievable how Hope to Recharge is growing and getting to all the little places and big places in the world. And it's all thanks to you. If this episode was inspiring to you, interesting or funny or whatever it was, and you want to share it with someone, go ahead, hit the share button, share the love, share my enthusiasm, share my brokenness, share whatever you hear. Feel free to share it. I hope to see you next week on a short inspirational thought on how to live a more grateful living, a more fulfilled living during stressful times, especially before the holiday of Passover. How can we go into Passover with a more enthusiastic, healthy mind? I'm talking to myself here, by the way, because I get very stressed before Passover. My goal is to reduce my stress every year. So how do we reduce our stress, cultivate more relationships, go more meaningfully into the Passover holiday? or into any something meaningful if you don't keep Passover, if you're not Jewish, whatever it is that's coming up for you that you want to do it with less stress and with more meaningful emotions and more connecting to yourself and your loved ones around you. Thank you for listening to me. If you have any feedback, go to our website, hopetorecharge.com, contact us. We love hearing from you. And till next time, remember, hope is in your heart. Hope is in your mind. Hope is every single moment. Hope is living the ups, the downs, and the flats. Bye till next time.
Thank you for listening till the end. We highly appreciate all of our listeners. In Mental Health Together is Better, you being here means a tremendous amount to us. If you enjoyed this episode and you would like some extra boost of information and inspiration that is not on the podcast, you can go to our website, hopetorecharge.com. There's some premium content that for the cost of a cup of coffee, you can download some amazing information that will help you, a tool that will guide you through life. So don't skip a beat. Don't hesitate. Go to hopetorecharge.com and see what other offerings we have there for your mental health well-being. Thank you for joining us. And remember, if you enjoyed this and you want to say thank you, the best way of gratitude will be by you leaving a review or a comment or sharing this with a loved one. There is no greater form of gratitude for us. Thank you. Bye till next time.